Hello, everyone. Thought I would uh, try something different, more soothing, I hope. I hope something will soothe me uh, more than trying to get this set up. It looks, I know it looks incredible right now, but the amount of effort that it took for me to um, get a um, some kind of a boom to put the webcam on and uh, while not damaging every other, the fragile ecosystem of my desk, which, um, you know, is opposed to change and um, hateful even. And I appreciate that. I mean, we all have our struggles with growth and uh, adaptation, but uh, genuinely this setup I suspect I'm going to record for the next hour for you, and then I'll check the file and I will see that nothing happened this time. It's an incredible day to be alive and uh, working with the uh, systems that we allegedly designed to make our life easier. Um, nonetheless, let's go ahead and enter a calming space. Take some deep breaths. Get nice and calm. And enjoy. Enjoy the magic. That's what I like to say. I'd love to start with some, some spooky occult drawings. We may even move on to a different medium um, if there's time. Um, I think there is time. So let's find out. Hmm, let's start with a, let's loosen up, let's warm up with some, uh, something I like to draw frequently is a, is a skull. Nothing wrong with it. It's a natural shape, a lot of comfort there for me. Um, I don't want to be a skull, I just am happy to be an owner of one. It's just a bummer that I don't get to see my own. I mean, you know, I mean, like you can get MRIs done and stuff like that, but it's not the same. It's not the same. Every bone tells a story. That's what I like to think. That's what I like to imagine. I kind of wish that we didn't have them. I think they're they're weird, right? It's not like teeth where, you know, teeth are sort of like an exposed bone in the skull. But I never felt that way about teeth. I'm just anti the entire, uh, you know, skeletal concept. It's not really necessary. What would I hang muscles from? I don't know. Something better than that, right? What about just a stiffer muscle? You ever think about that one? Maybe you got your regular ones for your moving your body. And then you just got a real sturdy muscle that those attach to. Does that, does that make sense? I think that's good, right? That, that tracks. Now, this wouldn't be a good scary occult type of a skull unless we modify it. And of course, one of the primary uh, places to do that is, you know, in the, in the quantity of things, right? You don't need, you know, we don't have this many teeth, but what if this one does, right? I think a, and part of why that's upsetting is like, what is, you tell me, you talk amongst yourselves in the chat, what's scarier uh, an idea? One, the idea that this is malformed somehow, or that its form is adapted to a certain need that we don't understand. Is that spookier? That's good gravy. I think the latter's scarier myself. Also, let me also argue that I don't know if it's actually about scaring. It's more like what's interesting, right? It's 
stuff is allowed to be um, confusing and not because you're worried you're going to get hurt by it. We we spent a lot of time in that space. <laughs> in In this house, due to a young man who has a lot of questions about all kinds of stuff, it's valid, you know? If you're a student of anatomy, you're going to say, Chris, you're doing a lot wrong with the skull. And I'm going to say, I know. Because it's, it's just a drawing. And you can do whatever you want. What's the thing that Bob Ross always says? He says, there's no, there's no mistakes. Only... Um, uh, only a good reason, only, there's no mistakes, there's only a, a reason why what you did doesn't work. And it's wrong. It's not a mistake. Uh, there's no mistakes, there's only failures. That's the, that's the line. Right? This panel uh, has been gently pre-recorded, um, which is why I'm not interacting with the chat right now. Or, if you prefer to think of it this way, it's live, and I'm just really, you know, antisocial and rude. And there's a lot of good comments in the chat right now that I am ignoring actively, and I'm just not, I just don't want to read them. You know, I've read them and here's the thing. I read them and I'm probably going to read them aloud myself. Like I made it up. I'm going to just say it as if it's my joke or my idea. <laughs> Whichever one you feel better about. Now that I've got a feel for my from my zone, this creation area. I'm gonna actually go ahead and scooch the paper a little bit so I can um, embellish it. Do we like this? Do we like what we're seeing? I don't know. Honestly, I'm trying to move away from um, these iconic, you know, dead shapes because honestly, it's not about like, oh no, that thing's gonna bite me. For me, I don't care if it's going to bite me or not. Like, if it's coming to bite you in the horror context, if it's coming to bite you, you know what to do. You go away from it or you get a old pipe or a bat, right? You figure it out. Some of your instinct can kick in. Uh, and maybe that actually would remove some of the fear because it's like, well, my body knows what to do. Um, I like the idea that... Um, Maybe it's not attacking you. Maybe it doesn't even look threatening. We can come back to this if, if you want. Um, I think, I mean, I like it as a start, as a warm-up. Should I use the other side of the thing? Somebody's going to be get, getting these in the mail, and uh, maybe they get a two-sided one. I don't know. Um, heaven knows. I got enough paper here. I made a bunch of it. This is some of the best I've made. Oh, let me share this with you. Um, so these are some of the best ones I've made. It's just tea paper. I just boil some tea and put it in a pot. And then I just dunk these in and crumple them up. And then in this case, what I did was uh, get some, this is watercolor, uh, get some watercolor, dip it in, and then I can practice the Tetrathanatica the four-stroke writing system discovered by Cathris that one learns to do reflexively upon death. I've got a couple of one of them here, which some will receive as uh, as gifts here at the end of the final season of the C Team. My son, if you're fortunate enough to get this one, my son said, "I will." Um, let me fray that edge for you. And I said, I don't know. I don't like I'm frayed. But I think he had the right idea. These are looking, it looks real good. My issue is that he tends to like, 
say, let's distress it, and then he'll just rip it to bits. And then I'm drawing on a thing that's like the size of a corner. And I said, well, that's distressed, but I mean, it's also not really usable by me. So we've, it's, it's like the letter of the law, but it's a little too, uh, too vigorous of a move. Hmm. Let's try a different thing. Let's try another thing that I, I first drew at the table. Meanwhile, while I do this, um, maybe I can workshop to myself what this panel could be named in the future. I won't, I'm trying to figure out like occult, like occult arts and crafts, but there's got to be a pun someplace in there. I'm anti, like Lovecraft, no thank you. I mean, it's there, but let's not use it. <laughs> what else is there? There's, um... no, that's not it. <laughs> I said there's, um, and then there actually wasn't anything. It's like my mouse stood in front of everybody and said, attention, and then pivoted to my brain, and my brain was eating a sandwich. I said, what do you want? So you're supposed to fill something in here. No, I don't have anything for you. That's not how this works. So I first drew this shape um, during one of the C-Team episodes. Although I made it a lot twistier than I'm doing this one. Maybe I'll, I'll embellish it. But it was just like an organic shape stretched out on something. And of course, I enjoy drawing that a lot. And uh, I wanted to um, I'm gonna spice it up with some little eyeballs in there. Because what do you need? I mean, you're going to succeed if you got that many eyeballs, right? That's a classic maneuver. You don't get much better than that if you're a creature that says you got nothing but time but to look at stuff. I don't need to evolve fangs or... You know, any defense mechanisms, it's just eyes, friend. I'm going to see it all. I'm done with the rest. It was a little bit ambiguous. I need some of that. I think I actually started with the eyes last time because that helped to give it that a twisting shape. Now, the ones I had done the last time were real small. Almost like they were, you know, kind of evolving out of the space. Out of this, uh, wherever this thing is. But I wonder if it would lend it anything if I added a real big one. I don't know. I mean, I'll try. So like these are looking these are pretty good to me. I'm not mad at these. I could try to put one big one, but then it almost doesn't make sense with a lot of these other what the concept like. This is about a flat structure. This is a this there's no hierarchy here. It's like there's no cubicle walls, everything's down. You can pop into my space and rap about some project you're interested in. No I should have uh primacy over any other. Nah, this guy's being real selfish. He says, nah, I'm going to go ahead and go for it. I never had an opportunity to, um, to work in a startup. Um, I graduated from college into the dot-com burst, uh, the bubble burst, I mean, not like the bloom, but the failing, the part where nobody was had, nobody had good ideas. And maybe beanbags aren't, the, you know, the way to structure your multi-billion dollar endeavor. So by the time I graduated, I was about three months late to that, and it was tough to find work. 
But my understanding was that there was a lot of incentives, you know, unorthodox incentives that would let, that would make people say, hey, this place isn't so bad. And one of them was like, go ahead and drink at the office. I thought, why are you going to get anything done if you're drinking at the office? Uh, apparently they tried. I mean, I don't, I would, I'd say you could argue that that didn't happen, like that they aired. That wasn't actually what, what worked. It might have worked against them, I'd argue. My ink is getting cold. I'm going to throw in the microwave. And then all the way, there was a, a, my friend worked at a startup. I visited him occasionally, and there was absolutely a foosball machine and bean bags. And, man, there was a fridge full of sodas. You could have any soda you want. Go ahead and go up there and pick one. Also, why are you going home so early? It's only 8 p.m. We got a lot of stuff to push out the door. And that was also the downfall of my... my uh, career as a programmer because I wasn't super good at it. I enjoy logic. I like the idea of expressing something in a concrete way. I like the idea of an irreducible grammar and reducible ones. You got to be able to reduce them too. Uh, factoring, refactoring. Those are neat. Um, but the downfall was, uh, Somebody on Twitter was, they were asking in general, retweet with the weirdest thing you ever got in trouble for at work. And um, uh, granted, I was a pretty different person then, um, just because I was shy. I hadn't yet figured a lot of my place and things out. And um, uh, as a programmer, I had begun work at this company. And <laughs> they, uh, I was looking forward to working on teams, various teams and groups. Uh, it was a big, a lot of big development projects. And um, my supervisor, my manager, placed me separate. He did not put me on teams. He put me in, in, um, like here, you work on this interop, you know, this export system, on your own. It was a one person task, right? And I didn't really report to anybody but him. And I did it, and then I saw everybody working together and having a good time. And I went back to my cubicle and I was doing my stuff. And uh, one of our, one of my evaluations, uh, he says, "Is there anything you're curious about? Like, because your work is like my output wasn't that great." And I said, "Well, you know, I a lot of times I feel unsupported, and I am curious why I'm on, I'm separate. Like, why am I not on a team with everybody?" And he said, honestly, uh, his words were, honestly, we thought, you know, you started work here a year ago. We thought you'd leave uh, as soon as you could to find a, quote, sexier job. Because I guess uh, CAD CAM development wasn't like a cool job for a 20-year-old. And I was like, no, I like you hired me here. I interviewed you to be here. <laughs> like it didn't occur to me that that was even a... No, why, it's, why would you keep me away from everything? Like, give, pitch me on staying. Show me that it could be good to stay. Don't tell me that you're going to leave, so go sit in your corner. I guess that's not so much getting in trouble. I do remember, um, maybe even at that evaluation, um, and this blew my mind. I did not understand the logic. Um, this would have been about the year 2002, so I was a, you know, I was making web comics regularly, maybe 2003. And my manager said, you know, Christopher, I've, uh, I've seen your uh, website, uh, I've seen your comics. Uh, he was a French guy. He was actually Corsican. The CAD CAM company was uh, Dassault System. It's from, uh, they're based in Paris. Um, 
He said, Christopher, I've seen your website. Uh, you're doing a lot of uh, creative things. Uh, I wish you would show some of this initiative here. I wish you would do that here. And <laughs> I remember, it's like, I said, oh, okay. Well, like he wants to see the passion, right? But how do you bring the passion for that skill set to this job? That's what I didn't understand. Like, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that those don't, it would have been another thing if he's like, I saw your programming projects on the side and those are great. Why don't you do that kind of work here? Okay, that makes more sense. But it's like, you have a passion for singing, huh? Why don't you come apply that passion to your XML uh, parser? <laughs> I know, what? Okay, I mean, if I can. I'd love to do that. It's like, why don't, you're very tall. Why don't you apply some of that height to um, reading comprehension or whatever? <laughs> yes. I mean, if I, if I could. If I could, I would. And I think we'd all do a lot differently if you could just put XP into any old thing you were told to. This looks pretty good to me. Um, I ended up liking that focal point of this big eye right here. Dare I ink it? Because I'm going kind of heavy on these pencils, which ordinarily I don't. Um, but I could ink it. I could try and give it a little bit of that stuff. What if I imply that something's busted right here and it's sort of dripping out? It's kind of a, we'll cross this bridge when we come to it, because I don't know how this resolves as a shape. Um, I could try some inking. Part of my reach, part of my white balance shift as I, as I check the time. Yeah, let's try to ink some of it. Let's just do a little bit. That there. A lot of you noticed my um, my complexion, or my hands, uh, they're very red, and um, I have Raynaud's syndrome. And you can see the capillaries are not up to the task to delivering uh, oxygenated blood to the extremities. They're just like, let's shut. We're done with that. And that's their right. I don't want to tell them what to do. They're practically adults. You know, it's sort of the Montessori school of circulation. You learn your own lessons, blood. Maybe we'll start in the middle here. Oh, yeah, feels feels good. I do so little. Um, oh, this has a little split in it. I do so little traditional media, and I miss it because it's not the same on the iPad. It's not the same on a Surface. Anybody will tell you that. But I just want to hear those little... <laughs> I need to tell myself that it's okay to not say anything. You don't have to fill the space with goofs, right? This is a, well, I don't know what they call this type of uh, tip, but I don't like it that much. It's okay. It's a little bit thick. Let me take a look at what else I got over here. I've got a bunch of pens. I got a bunch of microns. I got some brushes I'm not ready to take out. I got a point two. They're not in any kind of order. Point one. Point oh five. That's we're going the wrong direction, gang. I'm 
hoping I find another 0.8. It's 0.2 again. Okay, okay. Here's a brush which is not going to do what I like. Come on. Another of this infinitesimal one. Come on, Micron. I want to put my hand in there and I want the universe to guide the right pen into my claw brush. What have I done? That's the end of this drawing. I can't I can proceed. Even if I find it now I'm I'm inconsolable. This is no good. Well here's a point five that right? I think that's the only one of these I have. Yeah, that looks about right. I also have one of these which I haven't used either. Check this out. Someone gave me this Muji. What is this? Is this a brush? No, it's not. It's like a tiny ballpoint. No, that's not right for this, but that looks cool. That's neat. I'm not mad at that one for being so thin. That's neat. Okay, let's do this one. Mmm, that's buttery. Mmm, we're enjoying that. That feels good. And even it's a little bit out of ink, I feel like. Hold on a second. Could it be that all of these are in bad shape? Sorry about that. This is supposed to be a soothing sound, uh, a soothing stream, not supposed to be me banging pens into objects. I could do that one too. I don't know if that's... Seems like the more specific these can get, the more specific they get, the more you, or the more I worry that we're entering the realm of fetish that I'm not aware of. And I want it to be a consensual operation. Like, let me, at least let me know what we're doing. Don't use my material for something that I, I don't approve of. Let's work it out. Let's have a discourse. Let's enter into an agreement. Because then ground rules can be set, determined. There's an exploratory phase, certainly. I tell you what, this is not really doing it. I want to. I almost want to say that this is uh, is not doing too hot. What if I lick it? Uh, speaking of fetishes, what's see waterproof on most services? Ah, refillable, but I don't have any refills for it. Hold on. We getting anything from that? This boy's kind of done. Jeez, what am I going to do? How am I going to display my commitment to quality and excellence if my my tools don't work? It's a poor craftsman that blames their tools. But you know what? I think that was said by somebody whose tools worked all the time, and that person is spoiled. What about that? You ever think about that? Poor craftsman that blames his tools. Oh, okay, well, tell me the last time your tools failed on you. Oh, never. I always, my stuff's always working. Oh, okay, well, why don't you shut your mouth? Because I use these pens until they're dead. I don't get a fresh one every, every two days. I discover that they're done on the job site, and then I got to deal with it. Right? So, <laughs> you think you're better than me just because your life works all the time? Congratulations. It must be nice. Must be nice. I'm going to modify that expression. Poor craftsman that blames their tools. Uh, how about get rid of poor? A craftsman blames their tools when do you blame the tools when they don't work hey there's no ink in this pen well what do you yeah don't don't blame your tools no i will at that point like what am i supposed to do with it absolutely i'll blame the tool what do you want me to do with a pen that's got no ink in it what do you want from me who is this theoretical person that I'm talking to anyway? 
since this guy is won't get off my back, I'm going to engage in a hypothetical combat with this person. He says, poor craftsman blames their tools. I hurl the empty pen at lightning speed and it uh, that empty pen and the and its attendant vacuum inside the empty cavity in there uh, it it sticks in his head in the manner of a cerebral bore and he just it just fills with his blood instead just slurps it right up in there then then I use that to draw with. And guess what? It's not great. It's start, It's weeping into the paper. It's not good. It's not a good ink. And then I say, oh, yuck. Well, going to blame my tools again. Because your blood sucks for drawing. What do you think of that? Yeah, I didn't like it. I didn't like it a bit. Let's see, I think I got about 20 minutes left. Um, and I thought maybe what I would do is change gears, something that I've been wanting to come back to for a while, um, but just haven't done. Um, in the meantime, why don't I show you? Oh, wait, let me just finish this part and then I'll do that. Um, let me show you, let me close in so you can see the progress made on this little guy, which I'm pretty pleased with. I like it. Of course, I can add some details like a, you know, an actual iris with the, uh, you know, the muscles here and all that, the little, these little fibers and, and all that business, right? I'm going to have to look that up. But let's just, let's just uh, take a peek at it. You looking good? You enjoying that? Looks all right to me. Pretty sturdy. And instead of proceeding with these tools, I'm going to see what I got here. What I was curious about being able to do on a stream was, um, let me show you this. So I made this um, in the, oh yeah, go ahead, white balance. You try and solve that one. Uh, I made this uh, at some point during uh, the C team. Uh, and of course, you recognize this as um, Cathris's uh, chunk of the black altar, which uh, is one to one scale. Um, this obsidian uh, shape that he that he uses as his uh, they use as their arcane focus. Um, and I made this out of Super Sculpey, or maybe it's just regular Sculpey. And I baked it, and it was a lot of fun to make. And the back doesn't look that hot, but I did put the sign of Maleth on there. Um, I, w I enjoy having crafted this. It was fun to work with clay. And I kind of want to just see if I can reproduce one, because I would like to auction this for charity. Um, so I have clay here. I got the rest of this one. You're going to enjoy that crinkling just as I do. So I've got that. Um, but it's been a long time since I worked with any, any clay. Gosh, ouch. That was very painful. Did you hear that? Every bone in my fingers shattered at the same time. So I'm basically working with two um, gloves filled with broken glass. And I'm surprised I'm getting any kind of purchase in this clay whatsoever. I apologize for that. I did not think that that would happen when I started working in this clay. So like they say, there's no, no accidents. Nothing's an accident. If everything is an accident, then nothing is an accident. Think about that one. I don't really remember how I chose the shape of the of the um, the 
arcane focus. The, the glyph is a different story. At the time, I was just trying to figure out, okay, what's a shape that has, or what's a configuration of lines that has the most information, like the most variety in only four strokes? And that's what I came up with. I mean, you could, it could be argued that there's better, um, but that one's mine. That one belongs to Kithris. But as far as the shape of the clay, I wanted it to fit in the human hand. Let's look at our size here. I mean, this is about right. I could make another one, or I could try to make a different glyph. Although it does, that's not as interesting to me. Because this is something significant that Kathris, they could not translate it and they had to, and they decided to devote their lives to figuring out what it was about. You got to understand that a lot of stuff on that altar that Kathris could read and was, didn't, didn't speak to them like, like this one did. I'm going to try and roughly mimic the shape. It went through a lot of iterations. Um, I guess the general shape of it was, I, I tried to figure out for the, um, the magnet that I made, which was again the same thing, same shape. I had, this is the first time I really worked with Sculpey or any medium for sculpture that for that matter, which is neat because it doesn't dry in the air. You just you gotta bake it, and I'm just excited about that. Oh, um, also, um, this it, it doesn't bake shiny. I um, I baked it, and then it was kind of a matte finish, just like this, and then I put a glaze on it. And that brought it into the obsidian domain, which is kind of where I wanted it to live. We want this to be an accurate replica. This in, yeah, in the, um, I mean, you can have your own headcanon about such things, certainly, but like in this, in this realm, in the C-tier realm, this is like the, um, this is like the kilogram weight in SI, and then this one is the, you know, has the intrinsic property of being defined as what the, what the Ur looked like when first discovered. You know what might be cool is if I made one that's like, this is sort of the, like the distressed version that uh, Kathris carries with them. And then maybe this one I can make as like a more pristine version that, you know, is not worn by age. It's what they first chiseled themselves out of that altar in that strange region of the Underdark. I'll put this down so I can compare the shapes a little bit. Hopefully that doesn't make the camera wiggle too much. But it is. <laughs> I can also hear a tick, 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 tick of something on the table that's touching something else, but only when the camera wiggles that's is this stuff like that count like asmr i don't know that it does because it just bothers me it's like what is the difference between uh, an asmr experience and say your um your faucet leaking at night and you can hear that drip because the because that just is not that's not 
fun. I don't want to enjoy that. You try to stop that as quick as you can. I don't know. I guess some people are soothed by it. It's a comfort to know that something in your house doesn't work. <laughs> Oh, to have a life where <laughs> that's a comfort instead of, you know what I mean? Like you got a, uh, you're, everything's so squared away that that something like that happens and you're like, oh, something to do tomorrow. Thank goodness. I didn't know what to do with myself. I was just going to nap. But now that I see this issue, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix my sink. I'm going to look at washers. Man, it's a dream, isn't it? Okay, we're kind of in the ballpark here uh, in terms of the, the shape. I will put it back down. I'm going to try and flatten this out a little bit. Actually, the big challenge of this is the idea that um, in the underdark, this would have been perfectly smooth. And it's certainly, I didn't have to worry about that, um, making that one, because I was like, wow, it's lumpy. It's not going to be as good as I want it to be, but it doesn't have to. What if this one is brilliant, glistening? It didn't occur to me until just now, but there may be, you know, much in the way that there was somebody silently judging my skull anatomy in the very first drawing I was doing, uh, there might be somebody who's an accomplished sculptor who's looking at me do this and going, no, what? No, don't do that. Don't you have any tools? Ooh. And the answer is no, I don't. No, I do actually have tools that I'll use later, but you have the broad strokes, right? You don't use tools for this part. This is the part that's just enjoyable. Allegedly. Lowest viewership ever. <laughs> I was enjoying it until the clay came out. Then I was done. No, stay a while. Leave it on in the background. I'm not judging you. You judging me? I'm not judging anybody. Let's see. So that's pretty good. It's okay. Well, it's in the neighborhood of it. And uh, and then I'm going to etch some ur in there. Okay. Now I can take my tools out and see what we got. If my math is correct, I may only have another eight minutes. Delighted um, to share this calm time with you in an era of human history where none seems to exist. Let's see, where are my tools? I do have a whole bag of them. Oh, I know where they are. Just a moment. I'll get up and get them. If it had taken longer... You would have had every right to be upset. Like I had left the stream abandoned, but no, they were right here. Right here. Right now. Now what's the best one for digging those holes? We got all kinds of goodies in here. Look at these little sharp diamond looking ones. I didn't have these when I did this one, so. Stands to reason that this one's going to be a sight better. Okay, let's take a look at this. Where does this line up here? That's there. Mm -hmm. Here. Right. Okay. 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 Right. Like that. Um, and then we've got to go here.
this line actually might be a little bit low. And then up here, we got to leave room for this guy. I don't know if this is like the eyebrow or what, but there he is. <laughs> it's like a person going, who? Uh -huh. Yeah, I almost think, I do think this one's a little low. Let's, let's correct that for this edition. Beg your pardon. So maybe about here. That feels better to me. Knowing what I know now. Oops. Once again, I'd like to state that there's no mistakes, uh, only events that make me really mad that they deviated from what I thought I was going to get. Now that I'm doing this, I remember some of the difficulty I had trying to keep these lines straight. Because it was supposed to look like it's etched out of stone. But everything just goes... It's like when they, when they do that pour of the milk into a latte. It's like, I don't want that. I want rigid shapes. So I basically have to like shore these up. And that tool is making it so much easier. I mean, I appreciate everybody uh, checking in on this stream. Essentially, I'm using it as a as like a a way to trick myself into relaxing and being calm instead of uh, you know stressed. I need the um, I need the oversight. I need I need to know that there are observers. Because otherwise I'll just start doing something else. I do hope you have enjoyed this stream as much as it's been calming for me. I also hope that you will um, attend not a pre-recorded one, but a live C-Team game that I am DMing for the benefit of Game to Grow. Spice and dice. We're going to eat spicy gums and I'm going to take the C team, most of the C team anyway, because Kate was busy. Uh, most of them on an adventure that will harrow the mind as well as the bowel. <laughs> if these spicy gummies are to be believed, as the DM, I am not obligated to eat any of them, but I'm going to eat them because that would be rude. I'm trying to make everybody do stuff while panting and sweating and trying to drink as much milk as they can. It's only a two-hour game, but you know what? I don't know that. I mean, that's a blessing. I'd say that's an hour too long if you're eating spice. It's going to be a real unique experience, and I'm interested to see what, what happens. And it is canon. And the intestinal distress that every player feels afterwards is also canon. I found a way to work it in. You just do a name swap. If Jerry goes home because he's real sick, you know what? Omen got real sick. And there will be a camera to film everybody's experiences in the lavatory. Don't miss a second of the action. 
No, I honestly don't know if that's the case. I don't know what the spice level is. I haven't even tried them yet. It could be that I take the initiative. I take the first bite. And if it's like obscenely spicy, then, I mean, I'll have a better understanding of like when to, when to leverage that, that heat. Because I'd hate to launch everybody into a salivary hellscape. Feels like that's in, that's intrinsic, though. I mean, that's also what people are expecting. So I don't I don't want to deny them that either. It's a tough balance that I will. I'm going to err on the side of everybody having a, a burned tongue and a sick tummy. Because it's for a good cause. <laughs> it's for game to grow, and they're good people. And if 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 that's what it takes these days to do right, then you know what? I'm on board. I get it. I actually made this one a little bit too high, so we're gonna stuff this back in the space and solve that. There we go. That looks pretty good. Well, I think that's about where I end up today, but I think we're in pretty good shape here. I appreciate everybody coming by and, uh, you know, whether you are actively paying attention or not, um, I, I mean, I'm not offended if you just napped through it because heaven knows that we all need that. We're all feeling good about unconsciousness, uh, you know, contemporarily. I totally get it. Um, and I hope you'll roll through for that C-Team game. And uh, I, will, I, will, I'll, I will check you all out later. Thanks for enjoying looking at my hands. Bye.